Did any of you recognize the song that the girls were playing? Thank you, girls. Anybody recognize that song? It's probably because they didn't put it in the later hymnals. The song was entitled, Prepare to Meet Thy God. Anybody remember that now? Careless soul, why will you linger, wandering from the fold of God? Hear you not the invitation, O oh, prepare to meet thy God. Why so thoughtless are you standing while the fleeting years go by? And your life is spent in folly. Oh, prepare to meet thy God. Hear you not the earnest pleadings <clears throat> of your friends that wish you well? And perhaps before tomorrow you'll be called to meet your God. If you spurn the invitation till the Spirit shall depart, then you'll see your sad condition unprepared to meet thy God. Some of the saddest words found in the scripture will be coming from the Lord God who says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. The most important decision that anyone has to make in life is the decision to take Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's only through that relationship with Christ that you can be prepared to meet God. The saved to meet him at the judgment seat of Christ, the unsaved at the great white throne judgment. You have found the scripture already that we had for our scripture reading this morning, right? Amos chapter 4 and verse 12. It's on page 1021 in my Bible. These are one of those passages maybe that we don't use very often. Amos was not a professional prophet, but he was a forerunner of three other outstanding. 8th century prophets, Hosea, Micah, and Isaiah. He began by pronouncing judgment on nations. Are you listening? That surrounded Israel geographically. Each one mentioned in the first two chapters being progressively nearer the land of Israel. Damascus, Gaza, Tyrus, Edom, Ammon, Moab, Judah, the words that Amos spoke to Israel, the chosen ones of God. I speak to you on the subject this morning, are you truly prepared to meet God? And I share with you some unexpected events that have taken place that we're all very familiar with that have had and are still having 
lasting results. Our text is from verse 12, where that he said, therefore, and that therefore is we'll look and see what it's there for, okay? We're going to go back and we're going to cover the entire chapter. Not extensively, just enough to where that you can get the message. But in verse 12, he says, therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Are you truly prepared to meet God? A day that we'll never forget. I'll never forget it because it's on my birthday. September the 11th. September the 11th in 2001. All of you know what took place. Terrorists attacked our homeland. Terrorists attacked our homeland. In New York City, two skyscraper buildings known as the Twin Towers were destroyed by large passenger planes being flown directly into each one. You got that picture in your mind and you'll never get that out. They were being used as a bomb to destroy buildings and to kill innocent people in America. The same day, within a very short time of each other, another large passenger plane was used in a similar manner to hit the Pentagon building where the offices of many of our military officials and others uh, are housed. 125 service members, employees, and contract workers were killed. Everyone on the plane was killed as well. Flight 93 crashed into the countryside of Pennsylvania, which was believed to have the White House as its target. This is the flight that you remember now, the famous name Todd Beamer. Some of the pastors attacked the terrorists on board trying to keep it from hitting the White House or whatever its target was, which no doubt it was us. But you remember his words, don't you? Let's roll. roll. And it's believed that they are responsible for saving the lives of uh, people at the White House from being killed and possibly destroying the White House completely. The destroying of the White House came about later. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Other flights were American Airlines flights number 11, number 77, United Airlines flight number 175. All these were directed by terrorists, people who were enemies of our homeland and referred to the United States of America is what? The great Satan. Have we forgotten? Has America forgotten that we have enemy (laughs) that are out to destroy America and try to destroy the very foundation of freedom the very foundation of democracy. You see, within their minds, there was a recognition of a God. That's with a little G. Who they thought they were honoring and as a result would receive great rewards.
because of these suicide missions. They're going to kill the great Satan. You see, by the very fact of what they did, the realities of what they did, they had some reality of what was right and what was wrong. They were wrong, number one, because they were deceived in their own religion. The truth of the matter is that the United States of America is a nation that cares for others and helps others in need. Reaching out with her resources, times of crisis, and as well as many other cases to strengthen and to help nations to know what democracy and freedom is all about and representing the true character and nature of our heavenly God with a capital G because this is the nature of the one who created all of mankind and cares for his creation. God does care. God cares about you this morning. The question I bring to you is this, which you can't answer, and I can't either, but I can still ask the question, how many of those that died were unprepared to meet God? How many of you know what's on the marquee on the underside, on the south side, on the marquee? America is great because of God's mercy. In our text, and I want you to keep your Bibles open because we're going to go through these verse by verse. In our text, it's taken from this book. There's a very blunt warning that's directed to God's chosen people, Israel. And Amos vigorously spoke the message resounding in the certainty of judgment. Amos had a talent for prophetic and tactful oratory, even though he was not a professional prophet, as we've already stated. And he began by pronouncing judgment on nations that surrounded Israel geographically. Each one mentioned in the first two chapters, we looked at just a few of them. I shared just a few of them with you. Then with uh, staggering literary effect, he focused upon Israel. Predicting and in interpreting the judgments of Yahweh, which were soon to fall upon her. Although he spoke of judgment and gave out the pronouncement of things to come, he also spoke, gave predictions of hope and restoration. 
God is good. Amen. Nations are divided. Divided by religion. And America is becoming more and more divided over religion. Amen. Namely, Christianity. Upon which this great nation was founded. In Amos chapter 3, look at verses 1 through 3. Amos said, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your what? Iniquities. Verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now I'll have to hasten to get through this. And I'm going to give you some verses, paraphrased verses, that uh, give us the message that Amos gives in chapter 4. Only 13 verses. And so I'll just give them to thee quickly. So that you can grasp, and I think you can by me paraphrasing it, I think that you'll be able to better understand. He's sharing with them, Israel, the words of God on what he had done, listen to me, on what he had done to bring attention to himself. Nothing just happens. God is under control of everything. God is under control of your life and mine. Just as Amos was speaking to Israel, his chosen nation... So God speaks to us through the principles of these words to us individually as believers, as professors of knowing Jesus Christ. There's an analogy here that we can grasp and should grasp to realize that God is in control and the events, the things that take place that have lasting uh, effects on people all over the world. God created people along with everything else. But in people, he gave uh, humanity a little higher elevation, the highest of elevation of all of his creation. To give us the ability to be able to think, to choose, to make choices for our lives and even for our eternity. That's the message that we must get out to a lost and dying world today. Jesus Christ in Christianity, hear me, did not come to kill folks that don't agree with them but to save folks that don't agree with us. And you don't do that by killing them. So the love and the mercy of God, listen to me, that we are so blessed today. We are blessed beyond measure. Certainly far beyond what we deserve. If we got what we deserved, we'd all die and spend an eternity in a devil's hell. Do you believe that? Say amen. amen. If you don't, you got a problem. But because of God's great love and mercy in sending his son to die upon a cross to be the one supreme sacrifice for our sins and because that he supplied the grace necessary for us to have the faith to trust him, now we have eternal life. 
because of his merciful love to us. Now I want you to look in verses. Let me just give you a broad outline of this. You with me? Say amen. I want you to stay with me on this this morning. It's so important. In verse 6, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10, verse uh, 14, I believe it is, or 11, 11. In five times, the Lord God said, yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. In verses 4 through 6. Now, let me paraphrase these. You look at it in verses 4 through 6, but let me paraphrase them for you. In verses, in verse 4, here's what he's saying. Go ahead and sacrifice to idols at Bethel and Gilgal. Keep disobeying. Your sins are mounting up. In verse 5, go through all your proper forms and give extra offerings. How you pride yourself and crow about it everywhere. And verse 6, he said, I sent you hunger, but it did no good. You still would not return to me. Now, the things that the Lord uses through Amos to speak concerning to making these comparisons, these analogies, are things that are relevant in the time that they truly understood. And today we can truly understand it in a different way in how that, how many farmers do we have here today? Uh, No, you're not a farmer, you're retired. (laughs) Retired farmer. Don't have anybody here today that's, that's living on a farm and making a living from a farm. If you did, you'd understand how bad you need God. Now listen, being we're not farmers, we might have been retired, and you know, I came from a farming community. I, I know what it's all about. I don't know how to farm and all that sort of stuff, but I know what it's about. And I know this, that farmers are dependent upon God. Amen. Now listen to me. If farmers are dependent upon God to raise the produce or whatever that we need for us to exist, we're dependent on farmers. Hello? which means we're even more dependent on God because he got to take care of the farmer. I don't care whether it's sheep and goats and cattle or apple orchard or orange blossoms or whatever. He said, I sent hunger. How many of you here today, now think about this, be honest with me. How many of you today really know what it means to be hungry? One, two. Two, three, four. By the looks at most of us, we haven't been real hungry. I wasn't talking about you, Gary. (laughs) But Ben, you brought it up. It's been a long time since we, and we're really, to be honest, we've never really been hungry. Some have. Some know what it is. To have nothing to eat. We've always been blessed in that way. To have something to eat. Besides grasshoppers and stuff like Chinese eat. (laughs) I was a kid about Jack Bateman. He'll eat anything, don't eat him. Am I talking about your daddy, John? (laughs) Now, look at verse 7 through 8. Paraphrased again. He said, I ruined your crops by holding back the rain three months before the harvest. And he said, I sent rain on one city, but not on another. Isn't it strange how that God can send rain, and it could be raining cats and dogs and right here and right on the other side of David's didn't rain a drop. Well, who does that? It's sure not our weathermen. God's in control, isn't he? And he said, while rain fell on one field and another was dry and withered, 
People from two or three cities would make their weary journey for a drink of water to a city that had rain, but there wasn't ever enough. And he says, you wouldn't return to me, says the Lord. You don't have to raise your hand. But how many of you have ever been totally satisfied? How much does it take to make a rich man happy? You've heard the old saying, just a dollar more, just a dollar more, two dollars more, just a little bit more. Never satisfied. America's blessed, but we're never satisfied. I don't want to get political, but I, to some ways I do. I don't know how, I don't know how some people can be so ignorant when I'm so smart. You ever thought that? And then you look in the mirror and you say, there's the dumbest guy I ever saw. Huh? Verse 9. I'm coming to a conclusion, so I want you to look at these. Verse 9, paraphrase. He said, I sent blight and mildew on your farms and your vineyards. The locusts ate your figs and olive trees. And still, you would not return unto me, says the Lord. Verse 10. I sent you plagues like those of Egypt long ago. I killed your lads in war and drove away your horses. The stench of death was terrible to smell, and yet you refused to come to me. Verse 11, paraphrase. I destroyed some of your cities as I did Sodom and Gomorrah. Those left are like half-burned Firebrand snatched away from fire, and still you won't return to me, says the Lord. I believe the Lord knew what was going on, don't y'all? Agriculture. Agriculture was the main source of life and income for the people. Their gardens, their vineyards, their livestock depended upon the providential care of God. And when those things were not there, it should have been proper notification for Israel to turn to God and to ask for deliverance from God, forgiveness for their disobedience, and seek Him to meet their supply, to meet the needs that they had. You see, God has has all the resources then and now. God has all the resources man needs for everyday life and for crisis needs. God has the resources, but man must turn to God who is able. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Now, notice particular verse 12, which was our key verse. Therefore, because all of these things have taken place, all these things have transpired, all these events were, that were in the hands of God, I've done these things. Say, oh, these things are terrible. These things are awful. We'll get to some of those current day things in just a moment. Therefore, he says, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. And we say, wake up, America. Yeah, we can say that, can't we? But what we better say is, wake up, church. Wake up, child of God. 
Is anybody hearing me today? Amen. Are we still asleep? We need the mercy of God upon our land. Amen. Not his judgment. Not his chastisement. But we have experienced within our land, our nation, our world, things that God has given us warnings about and instructions speaking to us today. I'm saying, as the Lord says, we too, folks, many still have not turned to God. And so he says, prepare to meet you, God. You see, there's an event coming. There's an event coming that will make 911 seem like a little thing. Amen. In comparison. Amen. I want you to turn over to the book of Matthew chapter chapter 24 quickly. Matthew chapter 24 Verses 36 through 44, because they give us instruction about this event. It's coming unexpectedly for the unprepared. But for those who live their lives in a good relationship with the Lord, with the Savior, we know that the second coming of the Lord can be at any time. Have you found the scripture now? Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until that day Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. Two shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding out the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered the house, his house, to be broken up. He says, therefore, be you also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Jesus is coming again. Amen. Are you prepared to meet him? Yes. Be you therefore ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. Now, since 911, what has taken place? What has taken place is nothing compares to 911. I beg your pardon. Earthquakes come unannounced. Tornadoes come unannounced. Tsunamis come unannounced. Hurricanes come unannounced. Droughts come unannounced. Forecaster can't get it right. Temperatures fluctuate up and down. Hot and cold, I'm telling you. That's what we like about Texas, isn't it? You see, what unexpected events that have had such an impact upon our world and gained attention to some, to the great power of God, 
God could have stopped that 911 if he had wanted to. Don't think God wasn't in control of that. We recognize his great power, but we need to recognize also his great wrath. Now, folks, I really don't give a hoot whether the Democrats or the Republicans or the Islamists or anybody else get mad at me. I don't want God mad at me. Lakes, many have in the last few years just, well, some did dry up. And some were so low that they couldn't, uh, they couldn't use them for what they were there for. Lakes and the river, reservoirs, what's the most needful thing that the human body needs? Water, 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 water. Bodies are made up of what percent water? Liquid. 80%? 80-90%? Folks, you need water. Where does water come from? Let me tell you something. More than we need water, we need God. Why? God is the source of everything that man needs. Bill Gates may have created the lovely internet, Microsoft. He now not do the Macintosh, just just Microsoft, Windows. I'd say Bill Gates is a pretty smart guy, wouldn't you? 